In this video we're going to cover how to make a side-scrolling character move left and right on the screen and learn how to make him jump also. Uh, to do that we have our sprites, um, we have the right sprite and the left sprite and a collision so we can jump on top of that. Um, if you wanted to, I guess a interesting, if you wanted to switch direction, let's say you have a character walking in the right direction and you wanted to make him walk left and you didn't want to redraw it, uh, you can see here that there's a, a lot of drawings in the sequence to create the animation which is the character walking. If you wanted to reverse this direction, um, you could just right click on the right, go to duplicate, and once you've duplicated it, uh, you can still, still uh, you can see he's still walking in the right direction, but once you go to edit, transform, you can mirror flip, which will flip in the other direction horizontally and apply to all images in the sprite, so right now they're all facing to the right, you press OK, and now they're all facing to the left. So if you wanted to, you could do that option, that would give you the right and the left directions. But I already have left, so I don't need to worry about that. And so let's delete out that other one. Delete. Okay, so my main character's name is left, so it might be a little... Um, confusing sometimes, we have left and right directions, but his name is left on the name tag. Um, so the first thing we need to do is create an object for the character. So we create an object by going to the object button. Uh, once we've done that, um, we need to go and add uh, an event. The, ad the events will add all the controls, and then these are the actions that the controls will correspond to. So the first one, we're going to go to step right here. Um, what step does is it takes, um, we're just going to go regular step, um, every 30th of a second is one frame, and so it's going to repeat this action every 30th of a second, so 30 times per second is constantly going to be doing this every time the program's running, it's constantly running step. Um, so it's not a matter of whether you're moving or not, it's just always running. Uh, so that's what step means. So the first thing inside a step is we're going to figure out if the character is standing on a solid object. So over here we have the move, main, main two, control, score, extra, and draw. If we go down to main, we can see these. If we go down to main two, we can see more options. So we're going to go all the way down to control, and we're going to grab the first one on the top left. This one's called check for empty. We're going to drag this one into the actions, and what it says is now if a position is collision free. So it's asking, is the character contacting a solid object? Is he colliding with anything? So uh, we're going to check for the y direction, y being 1. And 1, which is backwards, you would think 1 would be upwards, so 1 is downwards. So 1 is 1 pixel directly underneath of his feet. Um, and we're going to say only solid and relative to his location. So we don't want to check y in the top way left upper corner we want to check relative to wherever he's standing. So again, it's checking to see if he's standing on a solid object. So if there's a position, uh, if the position is collision free, so there is no collision um, underneath of his feet, because one pixel below his feet, if there's no object under his feet relative to where he is, we'll press OK. So it's checking that. Um, the next thing we're going to do is go to uh, this one, uh, set gravity, it's under the move control. We're going to drag that one underneath of the check to see if the position is collision free. Uh, and under the set gravity, we want to set the direction to being 270. 270 is the, uh, if you think of like a protractor, whereas nine, or zero degrees is, is towards the right direction, 90 degrees is upwards. So it's zero, 90, and 180 is going towards the left. So 270 is pointing downwards, uh, vertically down, and 360 goes all the way back to the zero degrees. So the protractor would run counterclockwise starting around this position, which is like 3 o'clock on a normal clock. Uh, so we need 270, which means pointing downwards. Now we're going to set the gravity. Um, you can change this to whatever you want. Uh, the more gravity, less gravity to determine how high he jumps and how much he floats and all that. Um, but we generally want it to point down, unless you want it to have like rain pointing at a certain direction so it's hard to walk forward or whatever, or something like that. The direction generally is going to be pointing downwards. Um, and so we're going to press OK on that. 
and we now have if he has no object under him, so he's floating in the air because there is no collision under his feet by one pixel, um, the, direct, the gravity is going to start pulling him down at a power of four. Uh, so now we need to go and switch to the control. Uh, so we pull on an else. So if there's no collision, pull him down. Else means, okay, what if there is a collision? So this says, if there isn't, do this. Else, or otherwise, then we need to go and back to move and drag in this. We're going to set gravity to a different number this time. So it's still going to be 270 because that's the pulling downwards position. But we want the power of gravity to be zero. So if, if he's floating, there's no collision under him. Pull him down by a power of four. Uh, if there is collision, so he is float, he is landing on something, then don't pull him down. Make sure there's no gravity because you don't want to pull him down any further. That'll make it really hard to jump if you have gravity while he's already on the ground. Gravity only applies in this case if he doesn't have ground that tells him to pull downwards. So we press OK on that. Um, and the next step we have to go and switch on to control and go to variables over here. So we're going to draw, grab that, drag that in there and we're going to um, test a variable. So right now it's saying if is equal to zero, so which uh, doesn't really make sense too much. But we're going to create a variable, and the variable in this case is already defined. It's part of the program. Uh, this one's called v speed, as in like vertical speed. So it's going to check if the vertical speed, and we're going to say 12. Uh, and right now this is equal to, but we're going to set that to larger than. So what this is saying is if the vertical speed is greater than 12, which is larger than, um, then we're going to do something. And press OK on that. And then we're going to go to set variable, which is the one with the square instead of the octagon. So we drag the square in there so you see the two different uh, shapes there. And we're going to set this one to um, V speed again because we're going to set the vertical speed to 12. And that should be it. So what's happening here is that if there's no collision, pull them down and it keeps, I guess, relatively building up speed or whatever, um, but at least pulling down to a degree. If he's on land, don't pull him down at all. And if the speed is greater than 12 because he's accelerating and dropping super fast, you don't want him incredibly speeding up all the time. So it says if the speed of him falling is greater than 12, put it back to 12. So he can't go faster than 12. If you don't have this here, he could theoretically speed up faster and faster as he's falling, um, that would make it harder to figure out where you're going to land at. So you wanted to limit the speed that he's going to fall, so he can't go any faster than uh, 12 at a rate of falling. So that's more or less what all this means. And so that sets up your gravity now. So he can fall, or he doesn't fall, and at how fast, the fastest he can fall at. So that sets up gravity. So the next thing is we need collision. We already have the collision object here, but if I double click it, there's nothing set to here and I don't need to set it here, I can set it to the character himself. Um, but the most important thing on the collision object itself, make sure it's set to solid. This way the character can touch it. Uh, just like we did with the collision when it said if there's a solid object under his feet, set gravity. So it has to be a solid object so we know that, um, that he can, that he's contacting with something. So we'll press OK on that. So now we're back to object 24 which is the character. So let me name him. Uh, character left. So I'll name that. Um, it's probably best to put an underscore there, but you might not need to. And we're, for the sprite, I'm just going to pick, uh, let's go with the right direction because he's probably going to start walking right when the game loads. So I'm going to pick the right direction. So the character's name uh, is character left, which is the object. And we have the right sprite, which is the first sprite you're going to see. And he's visible on the screen. Um, another note with the collision, going back to that, this one's turned invisible, so you can use these invisible blocks to build on top of your tiles, but you can also make it visible if you want to see it. So I'll make it visible for now and press OK. Um, anyway, so back to the character. We have the gravity set, now we need to add collision. So we're going to add event, collision. Uh, we're going to collide with collision, because 
the character doesn't need to collide with the character because he's not going to see another one of him on the screen. So he's going to collide with the collision. And there's going to be a larger list depending on how many objects you have. But he only needs to collide with collision. So if the main character collides with this black object, what's going to happen basically? So we need to go and add... Um, And probably, hmm, there it is, uh, under the move. It's very similar to one right here under control. It's not this one, it's the red arrow with the blue line. This one is the red arrow with the blue line downwards. Uh, so what happens is, this one's called move to contact. What move to contact does is that it, um, it pulls the character downwards. So if he's like hovering above by a couple pixels, uh, and gravity's not quite pulling him down the rest of the way, this uh, pulls him down the rest of the way and contacts him with this. So if he's jumping in here, you want to make sure it pulls him and you know, like magnetizes and clicks him into place so he sits exactly pixel over pixel on the collision. So we want to pull that again downwards to 270 so he lands uh, down. And then the maximum is kind of like how strong do you want that to be. Uh, we're going to put, I guess, 12, so it should more or less pull them down and hold them there. Um, but you can variate that on whatever you want and see what happens. So we'll press OK on that. And the last part is setting the vertical speed right here. So we're going to drag that in. And the vertical speed, in this case, we're going to leave at zero. Uh, this way, uh, once he contacts the ground, he doesn't pull down any further. He has zero speed at that point. He contacts and pulls them pixel over pixel downwards and touches this. So he he contacts his feet to the collision. Otherwise, sometimes he floats in the air because he doesn't always pull downwards. All right, and so that does the gravity, uh, the gravity and the collision so we can walk on things. So the last part is just the left and right. So we'll add event. Um, we're gonna go in this case with a keyboard event. There's two different um, keyboards. Key press means you can press it once and nothing, it won't happen anymore until you let go of that key. So I have to keep clicking the key in order for him to, for that to work. So you don't really want to have to keep clicking the left key for him to move left. So the keyboard regular just means um, if you click and hold it, it's just going to keep going repetitively. But that's the difference between these two. And key release um, occurs when you release the key, whereas this one occurs when you press the key, and this one occurs as long as you're holding the key. So we're going to do keyboard. Uh, we're going to go with the left direction first. So keyboard left, um, what happens when we press the key in the left direction? So the first thing we want to do is jump over to Sprite. We're going to change the Sprite. We're going to drag this in here. And in this case, if he's been facing the right direction and you press left, we want to turn him into the left direction. If he's been facing right, um, or face, well, when we get to the right direction, we want to make sure it corrects him so he doesn't walk backwards. So if you press left, change him even if he is left, make sure he stays left. Um, so we're going to change this to the left sprite. So he's walking left when you press the left key. Uh, sub image means uh, which image are you going to start with. So in this case, starting with zero is probably the best option um, if you have one image. But if you have like, let's say you have two images, you can put one or two and you can pick the number you want to show just that one image. But in this case, I want to show an animation sequence. As we saw, there's lots of frames in there. So to show the sequence, we're going to type in image underscore index. What this will do is it'll play every image you have inside that sprite, which will create the illusion of movement. If you pick one sub-image, it's only going to show the one image, which is great for if he's standing still. But if you want him to keep walking, then make sure uh, he has um, an image index to keep playing the animation. And the speed right here is corresponding to how fast the animation will play. So the preview when you are making the sprite, um, that won't uh, change anything. This is where you change that speed. So right now speed 1 means 100%. So if you did 0.5, it's going to be 50%. So it's kind of um, a percentage-based scale for that. So we have the left direction sprite play the full animation at a speed of 100%. So, okay. And so that sets the sprite in place. Uh, next up, we want to add in um, collision. So again, we want to uh, detect if there's collision. So we're going to grab this collision again, and we're going to drag it in here, and we're going to ask it, um, since we're going in the 
left direction, which is towards that direction, we want to, since that's negative, we're going to put, let's say, negative 4. You can pick and change this number, like 6 or 7 or 8 or whatever. The higher the number, the faster it's going to move. So 4 should be good enough, but we can always change it later. We don't need it moving up or down, so we're going to leave that 0. And he's going to collide with solid objects. So anything's a solid object, which again, we've already told this, the black collision is a solid object. Um, and relative to him, because if we don't click relative, negative 4 is going to be way up here in the top left corner um, and every time it's as you press left it's going to check is there an object there you want to check is there an object directly to his left uh, if you don't check he might walk into the object which is why we're going to be checking we're going to check and say if there's no object here then we're going to go to move and jump to position so jump drag this one in here so this is the arrow with the jumping one so we're going to jump to the same uh, position, negative 4, uh, and relative to where he is exactly. So in this case, he's going to jump to negative 4, but he only is allowed to jump to negative 4 if there's no object. Otherwise, if you just have jump to position negative 4, he might walk through the object because he doesn't know not to walk through it. So press OK to that, and so he'll jump to negative 4. And again, we want to move uh, contact in direction, so that would be this one right here. So we're going to take this and again, 270, we're going to have him um, pull downwards. So if there's a collision, it'll stick to it basically. Um, and negative one could work. I'm going to put one for now and see what happens. So uh, we have direction 270, pull him downwards, maximum of one. Uh, and that should be everything you need for moving him in the left direction. Uh, so change it to left. If, the, if there's no object, then move them and keep them contacted to the ground or to the objects. So the fast way of redoing this for the right is just select all of it, holding down the shift key, right click and copy. And then go to add event, keyboard, click on right and right click and paste, boom. All you have to do now is change your sprite from left to right. Same thing, image index, same speed, press okay. Uh, we're going to check collision. In this case, we don't care if it's behind them. We want to check if it's forward. So it's going to be a positive 4. Everything else is the same. And we want to jump them positive 4. Uh, just like we check collision positive 4. And contact's going to be the same. So we only we copied and pasted, changed to right, and changed these to positives. And that was it. So now he should be able to move. Um, so let's go and test this. So let's open a room. And let's grab some collision. I'll drag this in here. If you click it once, you can move it around. If you hold the, um, the shift key and you drag with the left mouse button, it'll start dragging out some more. Uh, and let's put some barrier walls so we can't walk past a certain point. All right, now let's click over here and grab the character. And we'll drop him right here. And he should drop to the ground when the game starts because gravity should be immediately active and pulling him down. So let's try this. We'll press play. Alright, and he dropped, he drum, drops right in and starting with the sprite in this direction. So we don't automatically want him to start walking, or at least playing the walking sprite, but you get the point where it picks that sprite. So we push right and he starts walking right. We push left, he starts moving left at the speed that we have him at. However, he doesn't stop walking because we never, we don't have a sprite of him standing still, so he's always going to keep walking. But in the meantime, he seems to be walking left to right. If you want him to go faster, we can change those numbers from 4s to 6 or 7 or 8s, whatever, and he'll walk a lot faster. Uh, but otherwise, we have this walking. We just have to make him stop walking when we release the keys. So here we have that. Uh, we'll press Escape to cancel out of that. And you can see it dropped him down to starting on there when we played it. Um, so let's go back to the character. Let's confirm the room. And we're going to move on to... Uh, let's go add event. We need to figure out, uh, we can do this multiple ways. We're probably going to do key release. Uh, we could pick other options, but we'll do key release for now. So on the key release, we're going to release the left key. 
if you release the left key, we're going to go add event. Uh, oh, we'll cancel that. We're going to change sprite to the left sprite, sub image zero, and speed of zero. So don't play it and start with zero and show the left sprite when you release left. So now you should be standing still in the left position. Uh, we might have to pick which specific image we want for that. But let's press OK for that. Um, let's open walk left. So that's going to be the stopped position. Let's not pick zero. Um, since we haven't actually drawn a sprite, it would be better just to draw them standing still. But if I had to pick, it looks like I guess number 9 would be the best image to pick from because it looks like he's standing still. 9, 10, 11. We'll go 10 just because it's in the middle. But we'll go let's pick 10. So press OK. So we're going to pick sub-image 10. So that'll give him a stopped position. And then the last part, we'll add in a key release on the right. And change sprite, same thing, to the right, sub-image 10 speed is zero so it doesn't play it and press OK. So now I press play and it should start him off. He'll probably be walking when he starts off. Yep, he's walking because we haven't fixed that part yet. But we press right, you let go and he stops. You press left and you let go and he stops. So he's always going to stop in that position. It'd be best, again, if we drew him in a stopped position where he's just standing still, but I don't have an idle sprite in the, um, in the demo at the moment. So here you can just pick a stop position if you wanted to pick a certain frame, or again, if you wanted to, if you had an uh, idle position where he's just standing, you would just change this to the idle position. But again, you can reuse certain parts if you wanted to. So cancel that. Uh, the last thing, since we don't want him starting to walk as soon as he starts, we'll go to add event, create. So this means on creation, as soon as the character is created on the screen, what do we want to do? We want him to not move. So we're going to grab the sprite, and again you would pick the idle sprite if you have it, but in this case I'm just going to pick the right and number 10 at speed of 0. So he doesn't play the animation, he picks image 10 and he's facing right. Press OK and press play. So on creation, even though it's saying use this, it's going to on create, don't move him. All right, so on creation, he drops in, and he doesn't start moving. You press right, he moves right. You press left, he moves left, and he works left and right. So if you walk over here, he can't move forward. Um, this part doesn't have collision on the sword, so it has a little bit of overlap, but otherwise, his body being the main collision point won't allow him to walk past a certain point. So that works there. The last part is to get him to jump. So we're going to move over, and let's pick the... Um, I'm going to pick the space bar as the jump button. So uh, we're going to go press space because I don't, if you use keyboard space, as long as you hold it, he's going to constantly keep jumping. But if you do press space, you have to press it no matter how many times you hold it, you have to press it for him to jump. So we're going to do press, and we'll do space. So when you press the space, we're going to go to um, under control, we have this one right here. It's going to check for collision. We're going to check. So it's going to check if there's collision at a position, which is very similar to check if it's empty. It's just check if it's empty, check if there's collision. So we're going to check and say, is there collision in Y1, which is right the pixel below his feet. If there is collision relative to where he is, then we're going to say, set the uh, vertical speed to minus 24. And that should about do it. So you can change this number. If this is going to be how high he jumps. If you want him to jump super high, let's say if he's in water or something, you change that to much higher and he'll jump a lot higher. So we press OK on that. And so again here, it checks to see if he's on the ground, then jump. Otherwise, if you don't have this, you can keep pressing jump and it'll just jump right off the screen because it, it won't matter if he's floating in the air. This says he, he can't be floating. He has to be on the ground, then allow him to jump. So we press play again.
And so now he can walk left and right. And if I press spacebar, he jumps. And so again, if I want to, if I pick um, the negative 24 and I pick a higher value, he'll jump a lot higher. So we can switch out some numbers if you want. Let's say I want him to jump a lot higher. So let's try negative 48. So the, the greater the force of him jumping up, the higher up he's going to go. And let's change the left position to negative 6 and see what happens. Inclusion free, negative 6. And right. This way he'll walk a little faster because it looks like he's walking a little slow. All right, so he's walking faster and he should jump higher now. All right, yep, so he's moving a lot faster now. And again, you can change his numbers to whatever you think would be uh, more accurate. And now he jumps really high. So you can see that the number you change your vertical acceleration to is how high he's going to jump. And he can jump and land on pretty much anything you have here because uh, it all has collision on it. Um, that should about do it. If you jump too far out of your level, well then, he's gone. <laughs> he fell off the screen. Um, and that more or less covers how to get the character to move left and right. So again, quick review, we have the left, change the sprite, if, see if there's collision, and if there isn't, then move him forward. Same with the right, spacebar, um, if, there's, if he's on the ground, then jump really high. When you release it, change him to stop walking. When you release right, change him to stop walking. On collision, pull him down to the ground and make sure he stops and doesn't move anymore. Uh, every step of the way, every split second of your entire running program, check if there's gravity. If there, if there is gravity, then pull him down. Or if he's off the ground, pull him down. If he's on the ground, uh, then just leave him. And if he is falling, then don't let him fall faster than 12. And on creation, in this case, uh, since we're using the walking sprite, I'm just telling the walking sprite, don't move. Just pick a frame. If you set this original one to your standing still position, you won't need this create and stopping position. And that should about cover that. So that would allow you to start moving and jumping around your levels.